Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. Recently, a lot of new attention has been given to the nitty-gritty of the network and what it means to go behind the scenes with the actual network itself and server meshing. And I'm not going to go into naming names because I don't want this to turn into something personal. But I was frustrated that something was being ignored, something that made the task of server meshing seem more problematic, but also less sophisticated than it actually is, something that I frankly call the secret sauce of server meshing. And the name of that secret sauce is UDP multicasting. Right when they first get into the details of server meshing with that CitizenCon demonstration, I thought to myself, I bet they'll be doing that with UDP multicasting. And then when running Netstat while playing the tech view, I saw surges of new EUDP connections at certain points, such as right before an elevator door opened, which I took as confirmation. UDP multicasting is the secret sauce of the replication layer, and thus also the secret sauce of server meshing. Let's dig into what that means. Your computer, all the time, but even more so when playing a network game, is a cacophony of incoming and outgoing information. You might have email running, Discord, a web page or two, trackers of news or weather, and that doesn't even count the multiple types of data going within your game. Information about the game world, chat, VoIP, FOIP, input from your mouse, keyboard, joystick, etc., all going to different destinations on the server. And all are different destination processes all the server. All this has to get mixed together into just one network card and one channel out of there. And then the similar data flood back from your computer from all those various places has to be sorted out and put in the right program on your computer and the right function in that program. That's complicated. But fortunately, I don't have to go into all of it to explain why UDP multicasting is the secret sauce of server meshing. But understand that the process involves layers of protocols. Going outbound, each of these protocols takes the data that's going to be transmitted and does something to it. Uh, encrypts addresses, labels it as to which process, and then puts it in an envelope. The envelope consists of a few bytes of header and sometimes a few bytes of footer data that says what it did with the data and what needs to happen at the other end to it. So the envelope analogy is quite apt. It then hands the envelope to the next layer of the protocol stack, which does its step and adds its own envelope on the front and back of the packet until you reach the lowest level, which is called the physical layer, where software gives over to the actual media of transmission. Now, UDP, or Universal Datagram Protocol, is one of those layers in the middle of the stack, known as the transmission layer. It shares that layer with another protocol you might have also heard of, Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP. Two protocols for two different purposes. TCP is for on-demand, whole, intact blocks of information, such as a file or a web page with a specific length and a specific content. UDP is for continuous information, such as telemetry from an instrument, voice conversations, video cameras, and live broadcasts. And thus, the first big difference is how they handle envelopes that contain damaged data or where there appears to be a missing envelope. TCP has the receiver say, excuse me, can you please resend envelope number X, while UDP just tosses out the envelope and waits for the next one, which will render this one outdated anyhow. As a result, TCP is for give me a web page, and UDP is for I want to watch the Super Bowl too. And that too is important. Because there's no back traffic with UDP, if there's a million people watching the Super Bowl, the broadcaster does not have to have the bandwidth to send out a million video streams of the Super Bowl. It sends out one, with a whole list of destinations on the packets rather than just one. That's UDP multicasting. It's like sending out an email with a whole list of recipients. It doesn't take you longer to compose the email, and you only send the email out once and it doesn't add that much size to the outbound data needing to be sent. The protocols out there then send that email to all the various inboxes where it will probably be caught by their spam blockers. Now, let's move this and apply it to the replication layer. You can look at the replication layer either as part of the data layer of Star Citizen or as a layer between the data layer and everything else. Pretty much every client server application, not just games, has a data layer that sits between the database and the server program. And the server program sits between the data and the program you're running. And what makes the difference with the replication layer is that it sends the information simultaneously 
to both your computer and the game server whose zone of authority you're in. How does it send it simultaneously? Can you say UDP multicasting? I knew you could. And it doesn't send the game server information about its entire zone of authority, only the sum of the zone's perceptions of players inside or near its zone of authority. If the game server's zone of authority is, say, Hurston and its moon, it doesn't have to keep in its memory all of Hurston and all of its moons, only the parts that somebody is able to perceive. Only the replication layer has to cover the whole verse, but its analysis only has to cover what is and isn't part of everyone's zone of perception. So let's say I'm running from the train station to the lobby at Lorville CBD. If there is nobody there, the replication layer might have to create a new UDP stream of information for me and the game server for Lorville. But if somebody is already there, the replication layer just has to add me to the list of recipients of the information stream about the lobby on the information stream of data about the other occupants and add them to the recipient list of the stream of data about me. And that's why I call it the secret sauce of server meshing because it is so efficient. So let me illustrate this further by describing this footage from my car's cameras as if happening under server meshing to cover a few more points. Now, if I was traveling along this road completely alone, the replication would create one UDP stream with information about me and my ship, and it would have two destinations, my client and the game server whose zone of authority includes this road. In addition, the replication layer creates a stream of information about the street also destined for both me and the game server. But obviously, I am not alone here, and there are other cars and other pedestrians. As each of them enters my zone of perception, perhaps some only briefly, I am added to the destination list for their streams from the replication layer, and they are added to my stream, possibly only briefly. This includes the slow-moving Argo SRV, slowly cruising awaiting their next tow job, not knowing that their next tow job is coming rapidly towards them. As each of us do our input to, say, steer or change speed, we send that information to the game server that calculates new vectors, updates the replication layer, and then the replication layer then informs all of us. Now, that player's client, in order to keep things smooth, immediately executes the move so that when the message comes back from the replication layer, it serves as a confirmation of what they did a fraction of a second ago. But for the rest of us, it will be new information. So we will always see others a fraction of a second behind where they think they are. That's the unavoidable consequence of ping. Now let's suppose the boundary between this server's zone of authority and the next one is at the next light. Now I am already seeing things beyond that boundary. So I am on the recipient list of their streams of information and things beyond the boundary are seeing me. So they are on the recipient list of my stream of information. And so that also means that the next game server also has been added to the recipient list for my information. This is important because when I finally do cross that border, My aircraft. The aircraft. it doesn't have to be suddenly told about me. It's been knowing about me for some time. All that has to happen is a handoff of which server is the authoritative server. And the old server will still keep getting information about me until everything in it is outside of my zone of perception. So far, all of us have been playing nicely. The ship ahead of me informs the game server that it is slowing and turning. The game server conveys that to the replication layer, and I see the changes in position of their stream from the replication layer direction and inform the game server that I am slowing and positioning to avoid a collision, which the game server confirms does not happen. Behind me, two Mirai Razors have passed the SRV on the right. The leading ones decides to swerve to the left lane rather than slow down, while the white car is also trying to overtake it in the same lane. The game server adjudicates that a collision has occurred. It accesses the damage to the hull of each vehicle and determines that the damage to the white vehicle was sufficient to detach the right front tire from the rim. The game server then informs the replication layer to detach the tire object from the right front wheel object to create a new entity from it independent of the car that was formerly on. Note that this is very comparable to what would happen if it, say, fired a missile. Both of the colliding cars, myself, the turning car, the cars coming in the opposite direction, several astonished pedestrians, and the game server are all in the destination list for that UDP multicast stream of the missile, I mean tire. The game server, adjudicating all of our positions, determines that the tire missile has passed harmlessly behind me and just narrowly missed the turning car. Meanwhile, since it apparently has not tried to slow down, 
The game server reports to the replication layer that the particle effect should be applied to the right front wheel of the car and also the rapidly declining health of the wheel, which the replication layer reports to all of us on the road and sidewalk. Meanwhile, the game server has detected that the tire missile has struck a bump and now has an aerial trajectory, which the replication layer multicast to all of us. This takes it towards another collision and a new, seemingly suborbital ballistic path. In reviewing the footage several times, I've never been able to tell where that tire came down. So just for the ironic justice of it, I'm going to presume that after having turned the corner to get away, the white car had its hood crushed by its own right front tire. So let's look at it all again in real time while I talk about our giveaways. We have our two drawings going for the sooner one for the Zippy Zazzy Zafta except for the Zeus 2 cargo, and the later one for the marvelous multi user mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video, just be a member for automatic entry, or subscribe and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video being the feature of UDP that is the secret sauce of server meshing. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.